Um, so again, sorry, if you could introduce yourself as your name, position, club, international. Uh, I'm Topsy Ojo. I play wing and fullback. Uh, play for London Irish and played for England as well. Awesome. So, um, we'll skip where you decided. So, what is your job? Sticking with wing. What is your job as a winger? As a winger, uh, primarily to score tries, but also to give as much attacking impetus to the team as possible. Awesome. How much of playing winger is strength versus pace? Um, it's it's both. I think. Um, you can't have the pace without the strength to use it in certain situations because you know defenses will dictate they'll know that if you're the quickest not to give you any room and conversely if you can't obviously make a bust in midfield and finish it off then you know you need that side of the game as well so it's definitely you need that balance between both is, is there a difference in playing 11 and 14 not really no i mean it depends on you might have a preference of what foot you step off or what what hand you like to carry the ball in. Um, I think when I first started here, you know, there was a balance between myself and Silosi where I think I ended up start. I actually played my first game on the left and then ended up moving over to the right just as he came in and we just settled there. And, Do you have a um, preference of 11 or 14? I think I'd, I prefer 14, but just more because that's where I've always played. You know, I have gone on over to the left as well and I wouldn't say there's massive difference, but um, like I say, guys do prefer to step off one foot, have the ball in one hand, so I think that's probably the biggest thing. What's your training regime like then? So on a typical week, we'll train, say for a Saturday game, we'll train Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. So Tuesday and Wednesdays will be weights in the morning, rugby in the afternoon. Um, that'll all be our preparation and analysis of the week coming up. Um, so then that'll be off day and then the final training day again it'll be gym rugby specific in the afternoon but that'll be more attack attack based putting the finishing touches on everything you're going into the game um the last training day that friday will just be real light it's literally just last minute fine tuning just making sure everything's as clear as it can be and then you're ready for the game on the saturday moving to the opposite side and how does your diet build around this is there anything that you're told you cannot touch Assuming beer and curry is... Yeah, I mean, obviously, we, we have to have a, a healthy, balanced diet. I mean, you know, we'll be told to stay away from fast foods and, you know, sweets, chocolates, those sort of things. But I guess there's a myth that you shouldn't eat carbs and all that. But I think we're lucky we have a chef here who gives us two meals a day in between training, which helps. But it's all in moderation. So depending what your body shape is, you eat the amount of calories that you need to sustain energy because if you're not eating enough then you're going to be tired and you're not going to be able to train well. How many calories would you say you eat on an average day then? I think my average is about, well it's meant to be I think 3,200, 3,500 roughly. In fact, I, like, I struggle to hit it sometimes because I mean, you know, it's one of those you eat till you feel comfortable but you know, we're quite scientific with it now and, you know, we've worked out what a player can eat on a training day to make sure they've got the optimum energy levels, but... How many portions does that break down into? Is there a set amount? Um, I'd say one, two, three, probably about four at least. I mean, you're meant to eat four to five, that's what we're told, but I mean, say like myself now, I'll have a bowl of porridge in the morning, I'll have my two meals here, so one after weight, one after dinner, after, sorry, training and then I'll have dinner in the evening and that'll be me. So. Awesome. Uh, going back to a few years ago now, what was it like when you played against the All Blacks in 08? It was your debut match of them. Yeah, it was, uh, it was an unbelievable feeling. I mean, we see, you grow up watching all these teams and seeing their traditions and that, and obviously to play for England in itself was fantastic, but to do it against the All Blacks as well, who were and have been obviously probably one of the best teams over the last decade was, that was a great feeling. Um, Going on to that then, what was it like when you intercepted Dan Carter's pass and did that 80 metre run? <laughs> it was a bit of a blur, to be honest, just because, I mean, I know we were under pressure at the time and I guess it was fortunate in a sense that I got it and managed to go the length and score, but obviously if I'd missed it, then they probably would have walked in, so... Um, do you know when you're running that sort of the full length of the pitch, do you ever sort of think of where the man, a man coming to, to tackle you? Yeah, you have to, you have to be aware because I know I think it was uh, Mills Mulioni was tracking me to the corner, um, but I guess at that time, I mean, if you intercept the ball in that sort of situation, I mean, their minds are so much on attacking that you would hope that you're clear. Um, I mean, he did track me to the corner, but like I say, I think I had the advantage of almost catching them by surprise. Was that try made sweeter by the fact it was Dan Carter's pass that you intercepted? <laughs> um, maybe now, yeah, but um, at the time, I mean, I, 
I was just happy to score. I mean, obviously happy to do it on my debut, but also, I mean, like I said, we were under a lot of pressure at the time, so just happy to almost turn momentum back in our favour for a little bit. How do you mentally prepare yourself for a match then? Does that, does that change from club to international level? I think your preparation shouldn't change in terms of, you know, it is a step up international international period and I know, I mean, I tend not to get too nervous before games, but obviously that was one game that I was quite nervous about. But I guess in the build up to it, you, you can't change too much because then you, you you know, if you don't do what you, you, you're used to, that might actually throw you off. So, I mean, I, I, like, so I'm quite relaxed in the build-up to games and, you know, I like to have music on just to make sure that my mind's clear about everything that I'm about to do and I think that was the case then. Awesome. Last two questions. Who do you think is the best winger in the world and why? What makes them so good? Um, best winger in the world at the moment. At the moment, I'd... Probably say, I don't know, that's a very hard question. I, I mean, okay, I'll say the person who I think is playing the best at the moment is Brian Habana. I just think, um, you know, I mean, he's been doing it for a long time now. And, you know, maybe say two years ago, people were like, oh, he's off form, he's not, but, you know, he's come back, written everybody wrong, and, you know, he's probably playing as well as he was before. And, you know, He's not just all out pace now. So you look at his work rate, he comes off his wing looking for work. He plays left and right as well. And you know, his, his, um, his strike record is unbelievable. So he's definitely at the top of his game at the moment. Awesome. Last question, how quick can you run the 100 metres? 10 seconds dead. <laughs> no, I don't know. I mean, we, uh, we, we time all our stuff over 40 in fairness. We don't even time it that much. So I, I couldn't give you an accurate time, but like I say, if I could, if now if I could do it in 12 seconds, I'd be happy. <laughs>